Hey, boys and girls, Doug Giles here. It's Voyeurs, Rich. And Wild Men. What's happening, Doug? So uh, you and I talked about this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. I guess it's been two weeks. Uh, when, when Aaron Carter looks like he committed suicide, it's still kind of muddy. And for those who aren't hip to Aaron Carter, uh, he's Nick Carter's little brother. And, uh, man, I didn't know this, uh, Rich. Who's but Nick Carter? He, so I think he's in, like, in sync or Backstreet Boys or you oh, know, some, okay, okay. some scary yeah, boy you. band like that. Um, he's a big blonde dude. Anyway, it's it's not my forte, uh, but you can't uh, you can't not know these guys if you've got you know two uh, <laughs> teenage daughters and stuff. They're not teenagers anymore, but yes, I'll have to admit we went through that phase with. I think their favorite was In Sync instead of Backstreet Boys. But I went to a concert with them one time in uh, Palm Beach, and oh my God, I've never heard screaming decibels on that level huh. with a you know stadium filled with. 20,000 plus impassioned teeny boppers over these uh, haggard 30 year old men. And uh, it was, it was insanity. But anyway, uh, so uh, Nick Carter's little brother, Aaron, I had no idea. I didn't, I, I didn't even know he was an entertainer. I didn't know he could sing, but he's, he sold uh, prior to his expiration, 80 million fricking records. Whoa. And he's been kind of like a, a Michael Jackson type prodigy ever since he was nine uh, nine years old. He's been on stage singing, dancing, and doing all that stuff. Again, I I don't know the cat, didn't follow the cat, and um, but what I found interesting is that when he killed himself, and it splashed you know all over TMZ, Daily Mail, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a lot of people who knew him, Rich. Uh, I mean, this guy's got, you know, like, I mean, he looks like a full on mess, heroin addict, uh, hanging out with trannies and just into all kinds of weird crap and, um, couldn't take it anymore. So I don't know if he drowned himself or OD, but anyway, they found him uh, dead in his bathtub. Whoa. So, uh, here's what I found interesting, Rich. And, um, I know this is a dicey topic and I want to, you know, I want to be, yeah. Christians, Careful. Christians yeah. and suicide. I think that's a good. Yeah. So, yeah. so, um, so all the, all the tweets started pouring in about, uh, Carter's, uh, premature death at 34 years old. And they're like, well, he's at peace now. And you know, he's, he can, uh, he's, he's relieved of his addiction. He's relieved of his pain. You know, there's, there's no more, you know, him crying in the dark and stuff like that. And uh, I had a, a buddy of mine, Christian buddy, and he said, yeah, he goes, it, it is kind of a, an interesting temptation to just take our, just to take my life and just to be at peace and not have to plow through the bull crap in this world. And I said, hold on a minute. Um, how do you know you're going to be at peace uh, when you kill yourself? I don't get it. I mean, here Aaron Carter's buddies are saying that he's at peace now. How do you freaking know that? I know, I know. Uh, if you're a Christian and you commit suicide, that there is forgiveness. We're all going to die in some kind of state of stupidity, and uh, I don't recommend it at all. But if you're not a Christian and you kill yourself, Rich, I don't know about you, but I'm not thinking that there's some kind of peaceful, easy yeah. thing on the other side. Well, let's go know. ahead and say it like this. If you're not a Christian and you die without Christ, you're going to go to hell. Um, the manner in which you die, it's not going to help you. So, if you die of an old, if you die of old age, from being 167, and you weren't a Christian, the Bible says you're going to go to hell. Not not because other people are better than you, because you did not accept the forgiveness that Christ offers when he paid the price for your sins on the cross. So if you shoot yourself and you're 30, that doesn't go, oh, well, he shot himself, so we're going to let him in heaven. Nope. If well, you're outside of Christ, you yeah. don't. <clears throat> let, let me read uh, some numbers real quick off. Uh, yeah, um, go ahead, man. This is, uh, these are suicide, suicide stats off uh, save.org. They said in uh, 2020, 45,979 Americans died by suicide. 
45,979. Suicide is the 12th leading cause of death in the United States. Every day, approximately 125 Americans die by suicide. There's one suicide death in the U.S. every 11.5 minutes. And it's the third. This is, I think this is really interesting and powerful. We have to take note of this. Suicide is the third leading third leading cause of death for 15 to 24-year-olds in America. So it's 12th overall, but 15 to 24-year-olds, it's third. Um, and the highest wow. suicide rates uh, per 100,000 in the U.S. are among white males. I mean, there's more white males. Um, so 2020 and 2021 kind of hit the gas pedal on the suicide rates, huh? Yeah, yeah. And it, but it, sa- it only says, yeah, the stuff they say about that's kind of stupid. They're kind of playing it down. But um, listen to this. There's one suicide death for every estimated 25 suicide attempts. And so you know how suicide attempts go. The, how, many are, how many are actual attempts? And how many are, you know, cry for help, which I look, man, somebody's doing that kind of stuff, trying to get attention. I'm not trying to, you know, throw another rock at them, but, but a lot of those people are not trying to kill themselves. So those are some stats. I think those are important. Yeah. And uh, again, in our culture, you know, the, uh, the politically uh, correct state of bland and wokeness and stuff, it's, to me, it's just, uh, I don't know how anybody can sit there like, if if I had a buddy, uh, Rich, that uh, he blew his head off, his girl uh, with a shotgun, his girlfriend broke up with him, uh, he was, you know, captain of, of the football team, and all of a sudden, you know, his beautiful girlfriend uh, ditches him. And uh, so he drives out in the cotton field in West Texas and takes a uh, 12-gauge shotgun and blows his head off. And at the funeral, everybody's like, yeah, you know, so-and-so, he was a great Christian. And uh, Rich, he wasn't. That guy freaking got drunk, he cheat on his girlfriend. He would screw, you know, pretty much everything he could pin down. Uh, he, he, he wasn't John the Baptist, I'll put it that way. Yeah. And, uh, but because he went to, you know, like vacation Bible school when he was three, all of a sudden, you know, boom, he's in heaven. So he exits this life in, in a, a violent manner. And suicide is murder, folks. It's, uh, it's you taking your own life, and, and that's condemned in Scripture. And um, but boom, all of a sudden, the grave rich immediately sanctifies the life. And uh, I don't know. Then you then you fast forward to cats like uh, Aaron Carter. There isn't a scintilla evidence that, you know, he loved God, that he was converted, you know, that that Jesus was his mainstay and focus in life. Mm-hmm. And then frickin, you know, rocks out from opioids and then boom, you know, he's at peace now. That's bull. Folks, and if you got anybody, if you got anybody in your family, or if you believe that, that's cuckoo talk. When you think that you know, when 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 you kill yourself, or you like you know, Rich said earlier, when you deny Christ your whole life, and then upon expiration, all of a sudden, you know, you're at peace and you're at rest. That's uh, completely contrary to what uh, Christ preached and what the Bible states. Right. You know, I'll, I'll tell two stories, and, and these are not recommendations for counseling. And I'm not recommending these as, as an example. It's just a thought, some thoughts to consider. And so I had a guy come in my office one time and put a gun on my desk, and he said, I need you to hold this for me. He said, I've been thinking about killing myself. And I picked it up, dropped the mag out of it, slid the, the action open, started looking at it, and I said, man, this is a nice SIG. He's like, yeah. And he was telling me about it. I said, well, can I have it? And he changed to me. He was like, no way, man. That gun's expensive. I said, you're not going to kill yourself. If you were going to kill yourself, you would have said, I don't care. Do whatever you want with it. Just get it away from me. But you didn't. You you freaked out because it's like an $1,100 gun. And if you're thinking about killing yourself, you ain't worried about $1,100. And so we got in this big debate. Obviously, the guy's still alive. That's why I tell the story. Um, uh, another friend was actually planning his suicide. Um, he was planning to hang himself and he's a Christian. He was planning to hang himself and had a video, um, conference 
with a psychologist. And the psychologist just asked him, he said, well, have you thought about harming yourself? And he said, yeah. And he said, well, do you have a plan? And when he hesitated, he told him, you can go turn yourself in at the police station or they'll be at your house. This is a crisis intervention. And so I got mad. I was like, how could they do that? And they got him and put him in this home and he couldn't leave. And he was there for like 30 days, maybe longer. And I was mad. I was trying to figure out how we could get him out of there, you know. And uh, then he got out and he came to see me and the court ordered that he had someone on a, a speed dial, like I might kill myself list, right? And I was the guy on that thing. And uh, so he came out and he stayed with me for a little bit. And when he got there, he told me, yeah, when my family left that afternoon, I was going to hang myself off the back balcony. He said, that guy was right. He saved my life. No matter what I said after that, I was lying because I was trying to get out of there. He said, that guy saved my life. I was like, whoa, like that shook me, right? And he said, can I stay here for a little bit? I think he was going to stay for a few weeks. And I said, yeah. I said, but I have a rule if you're going to stay here. He said, what's that? I said, there are guns all over my house. Every single one of them is loaded. Every gun that you see, even the one the shotgun up on the shelf, I said, that's loaded. Every single gun's loaded. And he's like, okay. And I said, if you shoot yourself, I want you to promise me that you're going to go out in the desert and you promise me right now you will not shoot yourself in my house. Do not make my wife find you and don't make me ten, pay $10,000 to clean up your mess in my house. Don't do that to my wife and don't do it to me. And he looked at me in shock and I said, hey, bro, if you want to kill yourself, it would be 30 days, 40 days, 60 days, 100 days. No one can stop you. I'm telling you. You're my friend. You can stay here. You're promising me you won't kill yourself in my house. And he looked at me and he said, that, that's, that's more than reasonable. That's more than reasonable. <laughs> and I said, okay. And guess what? He's still right. alive today. He's thankful. <clears throat> He's thankful for the time that he had at my house. Awesome. He's thankful for the, all the people that God sent to his life. And so, you know, there's some people. And he was serious. He wasn't playing around. Like he, he did want to kill himself at that time. Now he doesn't. He's fine. I don't know if he's fine hundred percent, but he's not trying to kill himself. Right. And so, you know, and this guy loves Jesus hundred percent. And so if, and this is a great question, Doug, cause I grew up thinking, cause I lost the state wrestling tournament and I thought, well, I'm gonna go home and kill myself. I was gonna jump off a building, but we don't have any buildings in Yuma high enough to kill yourself. All I do is break my leg and still have lost the tournament. So I thought, man, I could kill myself. And I literally thought if you kill yourself, you go to hell. Because, you know, that's been taught by the Catholic Church, right? And so how many people have not killed themselves because they believed it was an automatic ticket to hell? Yeah, no clue, man. You got, is there a lot. hard data? <laughs> right. Which is, uh, even though it's false doctrine, it's, it's good that they didn't do it. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, so I had this, I had this great friend, man, and... Um, and uh, one of his kids uh, killed themselves. And mm. serious Christian, uh, the the one that off themselves, um, love God, you know, grew up in a great Christian home. Uh, her mom passed away uh, at an early age, and she just couldn't get out of the funk, man. Mm. And um, and you know, some dire straits and stuff. She she took her life. And I had, uh, you know, some of my legalistic buddies come glamming on, you know, questioning whether she was converted and then mm. questioning um, her eternal state, you know, postmortem. And you got, you got, uh, it's not the unpardonable sin. It's a, it's right. a heinous, horrendous, and oft time very selfish uh, act, uh, but it's not the unpardonable sin. Right. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, man, every one of us is going to die doing some kind of stupid crap. Now, that's 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 stupid on a on an egregious level compared to, you know, less kind of evangelical venial sins. Right. And it and the fallout is, you know, just absolutely brutal to all the loved ones and stuff. But uh, I don't see in the scripture, man, where uh, where Jesus says, if you do this, uh, there is no salvation for you. No, it doesn't say that. As, as a matter of fact. You know, and, and think about this, because, look, there's definitely people listening to this show who know someone who has committed Yeah, nowadays. Suicide. Yeah. yeah. E either a family member. And, look, we're not trying to make light of it. We're trying to deal with it because we think it's a conversation that has to be had. Um, 
you know, people need to find, they need to go to a Christian counselor and get help and work through yep. that. Cause it's, and that's devastating. Like I can't even imagine that. Right. Like I, some things are too far to reach. I think that one's too far for me to touch. I can have compassion for a person dealing with it, but I can't relate. Right. Like I can't relate to that. But, but think about this, Doug. Um, the Bible says in Roman eight, Romans eight, uh, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Neither life nor death. That's, that's in the list. And it doesn't say death by suicide. It doesn't say, you know what, Doug, even sin can't separate us from the love of God. And when we're in Christ, sin can't separate us from the presence of God and the favor of God and, and heaven with God. And so I, I think about this too, because some people, I, I'm, I don't know what I thought about that when I was younger, when I knew everything in Christianity, but some people might be like, no, that's this and that's that. Well, what about this? What about the person that has dementia? They follow Jesus their whole life, love him with their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and they love Jesus their whole life, and then they get dementia and they start cursing God and cursing everybody because they lost their mind. You, do you think that person is not going to heaven? That, that's ludicrous. Like, that's ludicrous. Do we even imagine that? Or what about somebody who has Parkinson's or, or Alzheimer's and can't remember their life in Christ. Do you think they're not going to heaven? Of course they're going to heaven. It doesn't even make sense. Well, a person, you know, two thirds, they say the numbers are two thirds of the people who commit suicide involve heavy depression. Well, when you're in those levels of, of depression, that's definitely mental illness. I mean, for you to take your life, you have to not be mentally well in, in most cases, right? And so if a person's not mentally well, they've been a Christian and now they're struggling mentally and emotionally, do you think that's going to separate them from the love of Christ? That type of thinking and attempt at theology is lunacy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, those stats that you um, went through at the opening of the show, I think you said 15 to 24, the third leading cause of death yeah. is suicide. Dude, I, I haven't seen uh, in many, many moons or ever uh, that kind of level of abysmal hopelessness yep. among young people because usually when you think of i mean that's 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 freaking prime right there that's the I mean, years you're planning your life and oh your hopes and your gosh, dreams man yeah i mean i'm i'm dreaming i'm gonna be sammy hagar or i'm gonna do this and that and i'm gonna kill a dragon you know yeah uh, save a nation do something instead of like oh everything suck it's all hopeless <clears throat> that's where the church needs to kick in and mm. um uh I was visiting this this church about a year ago, and uh, <laughs> oh my God! And there was probably about two thousand people at the church. Rich, I mean, the place was packed out, and there was all these beautiful families, beautiful kids, and uh, just an air of hopelessness mm. in that church. It's just filled with religious spirits, you know, religious demons, traditions of men. And I was sitting there thinking, it's like, man, can you imagine if we've got a lively praise and worship band in here instead of this dour bull crap? Yep. Can you imagine if, uh, you know, instead of that dude wearing some Elvis costume and walking around with a wand and a bucket of smoke, you got somebody who's really on fire for God and could preach a life-giving message? So that these kids wouldn't think that you know following God is is about as fun as reading the operational manual for a hinge. I was sitting there watching. It's like these people are clueless. That's why these uh, young people are not coming uh, to Christ. That's why these young people are, are filled with desperation because what's screaming from your altar, what's screaming from you know uh, your pulpit and from the rafters, is death. Yes, and so. So you go to you go to a church like that, you know, which is uh, I'm sure you figured out what denomination it is, and um, or you uh, you know turn to culture, and if you don't have Kim Kardashian's butt, lips, and boobs, well, she bought then, those things, so right. Then then you know, especially if you're a girl, then you're just worthless, man. Yep. In uh, in this culture, so um, yeah, it's I th I think you you know the the absence of hope, man. That's what Christians are noted for is that we're not hopeless. You right. Know, we're, you know, Christ has, uh, has defeated death, hell, and the grave. Boom, banked eternity. Uh, we step in line with the eternal purpose that he's called us uh, from the foundation of the world. 
and uh, we have a hope, we have promise. And, um, you know, that's, that's the thing that, again, I know that this is a sticky wicket and stuff, but especially the Christian, like if you're, if you're prone to depression and we all go through dark times, the man, what you need to do more than anything is uh, Google hope in the Bible mm. and ingest those verses and declare those verses over your life because, Rich, we're all going to face it. Jesus said you're going to get storms. You're going to get hit mm-hmm. with darkness. I mean, Ahab uh, and Jezebel threatened Elijah so uh, so powerfully that he wanted to kill himself. He right. hid in a cave, you know. So, so it's not it's not a Moses weird thing. asked God to kill him. Yeah, and, and Christ was in the garden, and he was sweating drops of blood. I wasn't saying I'm not saying he was suicidal, but he was going through. Yeah. Uh, the the meat grinder and um, again it's you know everybody's going to face some kind of big downturn whether it's in relationship or business, dude. When when uh, when Facebook collapsed, our business something that we created from scratch and had been alive and well and kicking ass and making a lot of money for ten years. It was a dark time, man. Oh yeah, it was dark because here you are, you know, past middle age. Like, what am I going to do now? How am I going to pay the bills? Right. You know. So I didn't ever put a gun to my head, but again, it got freaking weird because you just get sucker punched. You can't see, you know, any kind of way forward, but that's when you just got to dig in again to the hope scripture, the restoration scripture, yeah, uh, the God's love scripture, that if you're still breathing, uh, you can still kick ass type scripture. And, uh, you know, it's that's what it's there for. Those promises are four-wheel drive vehicles for, for muddy deep muddy you know black as hell situations yeah and and you know like you said depression is a thing that we face and it's actually um it's as a result of sin in the world it's not god's plan for our life but depression is a normal part of the life that we live um when you suffer loss some tragic thing or like you said with your business or death of a family member could be a change of career could be anything depression is a real thing for you to visit momentarily that's what you do the problem is when you go down in depression, you don't come out of depression. And then those are the type of things that, that lead to suicide. Not in every case, but in, you know, like we said, two thirds of the cases are involved with extreme depression. Some of the best things you can do to get out of depression, um, worship music is powerful, like Doug was saying, verses on hope. And then remember this, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And, and the devil, he can't, he can't rattle your faith, but he'll go after your hope because your faith is made up of your hope. And so the devil tries to turn your life and steal your hope and make it a life of hopelessness. Then you have no faith for anything and that starts the spiral. So one of the things you need to do is make sure you're in a good community of believers, not just I go to church and leave, get involved in a small group. And, and one of the number one things that psychologists will tell you about depression to get out of depression is to serve others. Literally go down to the church and say, hey man, can I be a usher? Can I help out in the parking lot? You know, you want me to help uh, pick up the offering? You want me to greet people? Can I help move chairs? And, and you might not think that's a big deal, but I'll tell you what, those are the little steps that you take that require you to be somewhere to walk out of the dark and you're also not alone. And so with worship music, verses on hope, getting involved in a community of believers, surrounding yourself with people that that are engaged in your life, and then serve, offer something to others. And that's one of the number one things you can do to help get out of depression. And and look, that may may not be the thing that's going to fight off suicide, but when you get in that pit, how deep do you have to go before you start trying to get out? You know, and if if you're a person struggling and seriously considering suicide, get some help. Go talk to a pastor, go talk to a friend, go see a, a, a psychologist, go do something, reach out to someone because you don't have to stay in the pit that you're in. I know you might not see a way out, but guess what? The people around you, if they know that you're in that pit, they'll stop to get you out. They, they'll yeah. come together. People, people do care. You have to give them a chance. You have to give yeah, them a another, chance, and you know, they'll help Another you thing, out. if people are, you know, just moping around like my life sucks, you know, poor, poor me. Daddy didn't come to, you know, my third grade play starring me as Peter Pan or whatever. And I think, you know, the aspect of serving people and what you brought up just then, not, you know, diminishing praise and worship, you know, scripture memorization. It's like just 
Quit being a little solipsistic me monkey and navel gazing. I don't care if you've had the most brutal childhood known to mankind. There are so many biographies of people born deaf, dumb, and blind. Mm, mm. Mother hated them, wanted to abort them. You know, nobody three. loves them. They're freaking out here completely on their own. And boom, they tap into God or they, they get some kind of dream or vision or they or they take that as a challenge. Oh, you want it. So you want me to kill myself. Oh, so you want to keep me down depression. They're like blank you. And then they they go in the, you know, the in the opposite direction of what the demons are telling them, and what their friends are telling, them, what their families are, are telling them. Now, I tell you, Rich, sometimes when when uh, uh, I make Van Gogh look like a rodeo clown, I put on I put on m- movies or read books or biographies who had way more difficult uh, crap uh, than I'm plowing through and they made it. And, yep. um, you know, so, you know, get away from anything that sucks you into the abyss. And here's something that I would like to uh, um, tell uh, the believer those thoughts of unbelief, those thoughts of despair, if they're entertained, if they're practiced, that's practicing sin. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know, you know, again, we never think that's sinful, you know, because we don't believe or we're embracing hopelessness. And again, David had that crap happen in his life, man. He said, why are you downcast, oh, my soul? Put your hope in God. Yep. So he, he went through, you know, uh, freaking lifelong uh, depression with David. Same thing with Martin Luther. But they didn't practice that whole an unbelief is is like that's a that's a big mondo sin in the scripture. If you don't believe God and what He says about you and your life and the hope that He has for you and posterity mm-hmm. and His call uh, on this terra firma, then you make Him a liar. That's so, right. You know, so it's yeah, it's not murder, it's not homosexuality, it's not you know snorting uh, uh, fentanyl, but it is a sin to. To uh, to again to embrace hopelessness, that's bullcrap. There's there's no place, there's right. no place in the scripture where Jesus said, "Oh, you know these 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 uh, promises about purpose and destiny and hope. You don't have to buy into those. You just go ahead and you know suck that hopeless tit for all of its worth." Yeah, that's right. And you can't stay in that pit. You have to you have to make some decisions even to get help. Right. And one of the things you can do, and people will probably laugh at this, is listen to blues music. Um, psychologists also have said that blues is one of the most encouraging music because it basically says we've all been through troubles and trials, but it makes light of it and says, we're going to come out. You know, I heard a song, you probably heard it. It's a famous song and it says, uh, Monday's coming and it's, you know, it's terrible Monday or whatever it was. And Tuesday's almost as bad. Wednesday is this. It's a famous song. Thursday's this. And he says, and Friday, the Eagle flies. Saturday, I'm out to play. Sunday, I'm on my knees and I start to pray. Then comes Monday again. And when you listen to it, right. it just kind of makes you laugh about life. It really is encouraging. And there's one that says, uh, um, if you want to call my my ex, I got her number. It's 666. <laughs> now, if you're going through a breakup or a divorce and you hear that, you will literally laugh until you cry because it's the funniest thing in the world. You know, and so don't listen to country music, according to psychologists, not me. I enjoy a little country music, but it yeah, is the very old, the depressing. Old stuff, not, not the new stuff. Well, you stuff. know, outlaw country is good, you know, but country right. music is depressing. And that's psychologists. It's not my opinion. Please don't start, you know, emailing <laughs> us telling you hate me and I hate country. Right. I don't hate country. I, I like it. But if you're depressed, don't sit around listening to country. It's very emotional. Right. And so there's some things you can do. And then, Doug, how about that poem? Was it from... Augustine or Thomas Aquinas, I think it was Augustine, right? And um, his friend Claire, her brother committed suicide by jumping from a bridge. Did you tell me about that? Uh, no. Okay, well, I'm going to try to, I think it was, I think it was Augustine. His friend, her name was Claire. Her brother committed suicide, jumped from a bridge, and she didn't know if he was going to heaven or not. And he wrote a poem. I can't remember. I'm trying to remember it the best I can. It went something like this. Claire, Claire, were you there between the bridge and the earth? I was there. And the poem was from the Lord. And it was that thing like we've often done, Doug, when someone dies and we we hope that they were in Christ and we don't know. We're not going to tell people kill yourself and you're going to go to heaven. We're not going to tell Christians kill yourself and 
don't worry about it because your life belongs to God and he has a purpose for you. But I, I like that poem because it says, hey, you weren't there. You don't know what happened between here and here. You know, and so we do have our hope. Yeah. Yeah, so do you think in summation uh, this is uh, on point? So it might be possible for a true believer to commit suicide. But uh, I believe, and Rich, I don't want to speak for you, but I believe that that is a way, way, way unusual occurrence. So far, so good? Yeah. So if you're considering suicide, uh, I think the person who's doing that should be challenged above all to, especially if they call themselves Christians, obviously, to examine themselves to see if they're really in the faith or not. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's right. You need to ask yourself if you're in the faith. And if you can have those kind of conversations, then you're not insane. I mean, unless somebody's answering back and it's not God. How about this? This is from uh, <clears throat> The Truth and Suicide from Christianity Today. Uh, the guy wrote this. He said, well, suicides never held up positively in Scripture. There are seven suicides in Scripture from King Saul to Judas, and they're always depicted negatively. They are never God's plan for anybody's life, but it's also not the unforgivable sin that automatically condemns someone for eternity. Yeah, I, I think I stumbled on that same article, and uh, they bring up uh, Saul and Abimelech's suicide, and it's like, that's kind of negative. I mean, first of all, the Holy Spirit, you know, left Saul, just departed right. from him. <clears throat> God, God sends a, an unclean spirit to inhabit uh, Saul's carcass, and um, and then when he gets in a in a rough patch, he falls on the sword. So right. I would say that that was uh, an inglorious death. You know, yeah, to say that's the what least. he said. All seven of these are negative <clears throat> in Scripture. Suicide oh, never. Just... No, suicide is never held up positively in Scripture. They were always depicted negatively of the seven suicides in Scripture. So I was agreeing with what you said. Okay. I thought you said it. Uh, anyway, uh, does it say anything about Samson and his suicide? Because I had this one Christian who said, well, Samson committed suicide, and, you know, and it was uh, a thing of God, and he was written up, you know, in Hebrews 11. It's like, well, that's, that's a little different uh, than, than you talking about cutting your wrist and killing yourself because your girl broke up with you. Samson uh, was growing his hair back. He got his Nazarite bow yeah. kicked into gear again. And the only way that he could uh, bring down the Philistines was to collapse those pillars of the Temple of Dagon that he was tethered to. And they were going to so, kill him. <laughs> exactly. That's called a self-sacrifice. Yeah, so, I mean, here again, this is, this is you know, some, some weird stuff, the way that uh, demons uh, work with the, the person in the throes of depression. It's like, well, they're looking over there, man. Samson did it. And, and you're like Samson. No, you're not like Samson. Samson, you're nowhere close to Samson. You're just being a weasel right now. That's what you're being, you know? Yeah, don't, don't, I know this sounds stupid. I'm not saying it lightly. Don't kill yourself. If you're listening, just, just don't do it. Just find somebody to help, and you think, well, nobody will help. I've tried. No, somebody will help. That's not true. Somebody will help. Don't do it. And you know what? You'll be glad later that you didn't. My friend that planned his suicide is so happy today that he didn't do it. And he, he honestly can't even believe that he was going to do that. He's living his life. He's fulfilling God's plan for his life. And, and he's, he's still working through hard things, but he's so glad that yeah. he didn't do it. And he loves the life that God gave him. Hey, do you get uh, do you get emails like I'm on uh, my email address is MSN, and so I know forgive me, and and so it sends me this thing. It's like these are memories from OneDrive, you know, and it's like four years ago or five years ago. So uh, 2017 began uh, <laughs> the reign of terror uh, from Zuckerberg on on our life. 2018, mm. it really you know uh, hit us in earnest. But what's funny is that going back into these uh, OneDrive memories, Rich, when I was at uh, the lowest ebb, the lowest point where I couldn't see how, when, or where I was going to get drug out of this mess, uh, I get remembered, uh, or reminded about it when I go back and, and, and or when I open up the emails, like, look here in 2017, this picture or this memory or this thought. And it's got me and some of my buddies and hunting trips. And I would look, I look back at myself now, that's five years ago. And it's like, man, at that juncture, woo, 
God, I was going through the ringer. Yeah. And you know what? I'm out. It didn't, it didn't kill me. We didn't have everything wrecked and ruined. God came through powerfully. Yes. And uh, it's, it's a cool thing to see, man, because, you know, you see yourself five years ago and then you're like, huh, what? <laughs> I remember that dude. I remember exactly what I was thinking. I remember exactly what I was going through. And guess what? Uh, God came through in a powerful, mighty way. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So anyway, so like you said, don't kill yourself. And if uh, if you're getting those kind of thoughts and feelings and stuff, uh, go to a good pastor. He's got a stranglehold on uh, God and his word or uh, call suicide hotline. And um, I don't think it's, you, you know, I don't think, uh, again, it's the whole, well, there's peace. You know, I will, I'll get through, you know, and I won't struggle anymore. I wouldn't roll that dice at all. No. You know, no, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I'm terrified to touch that, even though I believe that there's grace for the Christian, but it's an unusual, it's the anomaly, it's not a natural occurrence. Boom. What else, buddy? I'm, I'm just listening to you. I'm like, yeah, I agree. All right, big dog. So, uh, sober topic, hard to talk about, but, uh, somebody's got to do it, especially when you got, you know, freaking kids doing it by the tens and thousands yes. now every year. Yeah. So what do we do aside from, uh, not do that? Go to uh warriors and wild Subscribe. It's free. Uh, do it before we get deplatformed off these things. YouTube's already working on us overtime to try to get rid of us. If you want, um, we'll send you a couple emails a week, let you know what's happening and keep you posted. If you want to help support the ministry, and that's how this ministry is supported, um, go to the War Chest, and you can give there, and that is tax deductible. When you give, we'll send you that information. For those that are doing it, we appreciate you guys. Warriors and Wild Men, out.